Hey guys, welcome to EDC Ready. Today, uh, I've started a new playlist called Locks and How They Work. One of the amazing things about knives that I love is not just the design of the knife or the blade steel. What I'm a real sucker for is, is the locking mechanism. Uh, most of my knives have, have different locks. We have here, this is a back lock. So a back lock uh, is very popular in the knife roll. Cold Steel uses it. Uh, who else uses it? Spyderco uses it, definitely. Uh, just uh, Buck Knives uses it. It's considered one of the basic locks in the knife roll. And how it works is that you have this little bar in the back here, okay, hence back lock. And then uh, once you open it, uh, it kind of just locks into place. And to disengage the lock, all you need to do is to press here. There's a little piece of metal that rises up and then the blade can fold in from there. And it's, it's, it's pretty interesting how it works because it doesn't only just have a bar here. Uh, the back of the blade is also designed for this bar to fall into and then you have a little spring here. So without further ado, I'm going to take this apart and kind of show you guys the pieces of it and how it works. So now that I have it disassembled, this is pretty much how it works. You have the uh, the stop pin here, which goes through here and then, sorry, you have the pivot pin here, which goes through here and goes through there. Then you have the little lock bar pivot here, which goes through here and then through here. And then you have this little metal spring here, which actually goes into a little hole in the middle, in the back here. And then this pretty much is just one big plastic piece that kind of it's, it's pretty much an integral piece of plastic. So technically, this is an integral knife. All right, and then that goes back here. And what that's, that does is, is that it provides a little spring tension. So this will always push this, this piece of metal up here. And then in, when it's closed, the knife is pretty much like this. Okay, so just imagine that this is like that, all right? Just like just now. And then this pushes it up. So this keeps the knife closed because for this knife to move out, I have to put my thumb in here, uh, in, uh, introduce some kind of rotating pressure. And then this will slowly push the knife like this, okay, like so. And then that will push this bar up and then force the, the spring down. And then as it goes around, okay, it just keeps going around. And then once it gets around here, as you can see, there's a little L shape in the bar here. And then once it goes all the way around, the spring will then continue to push it until it closes here. And then it locks, like so, like that, all right? And then for you to unlock it, as I mentioned, you need to press this down, okay? You press this down, and hence this, the spring tension will always make sure that this has pressure pointing downwards. And then you can move the blade. Once you press this down, it'll press down and it'll go up until it clears the blade. Once it clears the blade, then there's no pressure on the blade, you can move it. And then if you release it, there will be downwards pressure onto the tang of the blade here. All right, and then, and then pretty much, once it gets back to here, this will keep pressure here, and then this will keep pushing down there, keeping the blade in place like so. So now I'm gonna put the knife back together and just give like little pros and cons of a backlog. Okay, pros and cons of a bad lock. The first of which is that, uh, I gotta say one of the big pros is that this is a, a pretty much an MB dexterous knife. So you can move the clip here and here, to here or here. And with the back lock being uh, just the lock that's in the middle of the knife, it doesn't matter if you're a right-hander or a left-hander, you're gonna have the same experience. So you can always like flip the clip around and then you're gonna have just as good of a time as a left-hander as you would as a right-hander. Now the advantage of the knife is that the, the knife is pretty, the, this lock is actually a pretty strong kind of lock. Unlike other blades right here, uh, let's bring this, this is a frame lock. So a frame lock, you have this little frame here that kind of bends into place. How this would break is that if you add enough pressure, uh, this lock will actually either slide that side or would slide that side and then that's how the blade fails. With this, because you have a piece of metal inserted into another piece of metal, for this to pretty much fold inwards, it would have to mean that either that chunk of metal breaks off that huge chunk of metal or that you actually pull it so hard that the FRN cracks or what's most likely is going to happen is that the the uh, the screws, the, these pivots they actually get pulled out. And if you check out Blade HQ, they've actually done a test where they tested a back lock knife um, to see how much weight it can take. And then they tested it on a Spydeco Delica, which is a bigger version of this. And what happened is that uh, the blade actually broke off. Okay, the lock didn't fail, but the blade itself over here, they actually just like, they managed to like peel it off. Like the blade itself just like snapped and pumped and then it goes off like that. So that, that in a sense shows that the knife itself would fail, the blade would fail before the lock fails. Couple of disadvantages, the first of which is that 
back locks tend to use a lot of friction. It can be pretty smooth. This is a uh, pretty smooth, but it's not going to like fall shut like you see on other knives like this. This liner lock here can just fall shut like that. Uh, that doesn't really work because it does require a lot of friction to use the blade. So as a result of that, it's not very fidgety. You can't just release this and then with a the shake, it can go down. But all in all, it's not like the fidgetiest knife. Uh, no doubt you can flick it and no doubt that uh, you can uh, th either, oops, you can, almost there, you can thumb flick it. And then you can also, as I've shown you right now, middle finger flick it. And then it doesn't drop shut, you gotta shake it up a little bit. With a little, little bit of oil, it can improve as well. But at the end of the day, this is not, it doesn't have a lot of fun factor. If you're the kind of person who likes a bit of ambidextricity, is that word? And then if you like the strength of a of a back lock, it's also a very safe lock to manipulate. So my wife has a tough time like unlocking a knife like this because she's afraid of the blade coming in the direction of you. But in a back lock, what you can do is that you can hold the blade and then you just press this. It's very intuitive to unlock this knife. You just press down and then bend it in. And then uh, because your fingers have a little finger troll here, uh, it's very safe. No, you're not gonna. It's not gonna fall onto your finger like so, like that knife would. So all in all, uh, I really like the back lock. I like the simplicity of it. I like the strength of it. Uh, however, it's also my perfect knife, my ideal knife to lend to someone to use. But it's not the kind of lock that you like fidget with on a daily basis. It's not very smooth, and it doesn't fall shut. You have to shake it a lot. And oh, one last thing, um, back lock's actually nice to open up double hand, like so. I don't know, something very really satisfying about that click from a two hand opener. All right guys, hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, do comment below. I'm gonna do a whole series about frame locks and liner locks and so on and so forth and SX locks. All right guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay ready.